Why, hello. It is a nice sunny Wednesday. I'm in a pretty good cheerful mood, finally getting caught up on some sleep from our War in the Woods motor build extravaganza. And uh, got back in the shop this week and luckily we only went a round and a half. So the car doesn't need much, really anything. Not that I can think of off the top of my head right now. So we've had, we've had a car sitting here for a little while and uh, I decided maybe it's time to get it done. So this week's focus has been on Elvira and uh, I just haven't grabbed the camera to film anything, but that's actually out of Elvira. Ryan, what are you doing? It's a daily class car. You can't have the interior out of it. Well, you know, every race car, you got, you got two ways to really go fast. You know, you got power and you got weight. And no, I'm not kicking myself out of my daily and true street classes. I am just taking advantage of that option to lose some weight. So, and I keep fluctuating five or six pounds, so that's not helping. Uh, so, <laughs> figure the next best thing is just take the mechanical weight out of it. So we ripped uh, some interior pieces out of it. We pulled the carpet out of it. Um, pulled bumper supports out of it. Uh, next is going to be door, uh, HS sheet metal and crash bars because we always have uh, door bars in the car anyways. And then the cage will begin update to an 850. But uh, as you saw, that stall was empty over there a second ago. And that's because it's on the dyno. Oh my gosh, it runs. <laughs> so exciting. So uh, what we got here is kind of a kind of a temporary setup and uh no the wires aren't tucked as nice as they could be and some of the organization could be better but in the frantic amount of time that i have a sparing usually it's in the race car and for what i don't have that thing to work on i have even less time to put into this one so but this one is now running so uh what we got is a Mueller uh, dark six bolt block with uh, 388 cubic inches. So that's the four and an eighth inch bore with a stock type stroke. All the goodies down there. Uh, we got a hydraulic roller camshaft in this one. And we got the Brodix BR7 heads. We've also got Trinity's or BTR Trinity LS7 head uh, 16 injector intake, which is a common rail. And uh, we're only running one set of injectors currently because we do have a Holly Terminator in this. I haven't put my Dominator in there, so I do have a Dominator for this car. Actually, I have a lightweight Dominator I'm gonna put in the race car, but I forgot I had to purchase the traction control strategy again to do that. So then I just haven't done it. And I really don't wanna put the lightweight one in here because it kind of seems like a waste. Cause I really think I'll feel two pounds in the race car. You know, every time I have to use the porta potty before I go make a really fast pass, it always comes out good. So I figured two pounds with a Dominator just gets me a round or two ahead of my normal schedule. So, <laughs> um, I do have a little turbo on this one. It's only got a VSR, uh, 8896 with a, uh, V-band 130 AR exhaust housing. Uh, we do have a water air intercooler hiding underneath this headlight here. And then got an air filter on my turbo, which has seen some water because I do drive it quite a bit when it runs. Uh, we just took the cold case radiator out of it for a Mishimoto because the cold case expanded like a hot air balloon without even hurting a head gasket. So I did that like a long time ago. So that was kind of annoying. Um, what's this stuff? Like some speckles, some speckles on here. Some speckles. So, uh, really that's about it. It's really mostly streetcar stuff. You know, like uh, Mighty Mouse Catch Can. I like those a lot. Um, so it sucks, crankcase vacuum all the time. And then when we go in the boost, it comes out the little air filter. So that's nice. So that way we have nice clean oil all the time. And 
yeah, just some like, you know, creature comfort stuff. So, uh, which I mean, it's got AC on it too. So there's a factory AC compressor and it's got power steering, which actually has a power steering rack on it. And then uh, we do have a four inch downpipe that goes to a four inch boost actuated loud valve. So that's ran off the CO2 that goes to the dome control. So as soon as I put CO2 on the dome, it pops open that valve and that way the turbo can spin up faster, easier, you know, because it's not driven by a belt or a crankshaft. Uh, the rest of the exhaust is actually a um, factory. So it goes back here to the factory, muffler and tailpipes and every now and then when it's broken, I don't like to push around by hand. So we put a push bar attachment on it because I have a golf cart for that. But this car does run a uh, D and J transmissions for a lady. And it's got a Mosier 9 inch in it. So, I mean, it's got, it's got some go fast goodies. So it should eventually go fast, right? So that's the goal there. Um, let's see, interior. Yeah, that's kind of where we started this conversation. Well, all the interior fell out of it. I don't know what happened. Not sure what happened there. We're gonna put lightweight carpet in it. I am switching it from gray to black. Uh, I do not like the tan or the gray, I'm sorry. We're going from tan interior to black. I'm not a big fan of the tan. So black is where it's at. So we're changing that over and that's gonna be pretty cool. I'll be right back. We'll edit back into this here in just a second. Okay. So, losing weight, adding some horsepower. There ain't much interior in here right now. But that's okay, it can go back in there. My goal is to get us dialed in on the dyno. I'm hoping to make at least a thousand horsepower. We'd like to see 1200. Once we have that, we're gonna be loading up on the trailer. Then we're gonna go up to US 36, do some test passes, where hopefully I can foot break this thing down to, to some 580s. That's what I really like to do, but we will see. That's my goal. I'd like to see some 580s tonight if we can. Um, so I'll, let's get this thing rolling on the dyno. Okay, so I am going to write a tune file for this so that it is in third gear with the lockup on so you got a lockup might as well use a lockup so you use it on the dyno all right looks like that should be set Go ahead and zero that boost out. We don't need no 62 pounds of dome pressure. Poor five three. Okay. All right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sink it to the dyno. This new seat's a little bent over. Doesn't feel very good at all.
about asked for my dyno sheet. Normally that step right there, I get my dyno paperwork for whatever I'm tuning at that second. But obviously I should know what numbskull owns this. Megan Mitchell, AKA the owner of the Firebird if you ask her. checking out our learn data I don't know if my mouse gonna hold you very well so I'll stick you in there but you might go flying on the first run first run's gonna be pretty long because it'll be wastegate only so I'm gonna knock a little timing out of it there we go Yep. Not a whole lot of timing. And uh, we'll do a wastegate or uh, yeah, wastegate close and then cutout close. So Okay, welcome to the back of my head. Alright, let's do wastegate pull. Okay, so I think we gotta fix that. We put new valve cover gaskets on. These are Dorman valve covers. Valve cover gaskets seemed a little questionable. They did stretch after they got some oil on them in 15 minutes of runtime. So we put some better gaskets on there, not really the OE ones, so they didn't have a set with me. So we got those changed out and uh, the rockers are barely touching the PCV shim or uh, shield in there to stop oil splash without the PCV valve normally. So I ripped those out. So both valve covers. Now we'll see if it leaks again or if we're leak free. So I'm gonna hand this over to Brandon. Okay, Brandon says we don't have any leaks. Yay! So now let's see if we keep those leaks at bay. All right. Not gonna lie, kind of spoiling the power numbers right now. I may have to do a, ver a timing verification check on it. So we got 22 degrees of timing about two, three pounds of boost. And we made 390. Figure this motor in it would make like 440. Okay, well, I might have some more boost.
I did better. Okay, so. That was 12 pounds on the dome. Uh-oh, we got James looking underneath. Let's see if we got a leak. All right, 12 pounds on the dome. We got 12 pounds of boost there. And it fell off to about nine and a half pounds. I revved it up to almost 7,000 RPMs. And then timing's around 17 degrees. And we got a pretty nice looking 800 horsepower Dynograph. Peak power is 6,000. But the boost is falling down. So that's okay. This is kind of a small turbo for this build. So it's probably just sucking it all up, you know? So we'll make some adjustments and then get back after it. I like that. That makes me happy. Now we just gotta make it our 400. Okay, the saga of repairs continues. I think I just solved the mystery on why the uh, 5.3 let go so violently. We, since the Terminator, we can't send out a 12 volt signal to the um, voltage booster and the, um, yeah, so can't do that. Uh, so what I had done is I had used a Hobbs pressure switch um, to send out power to the hot, to the voltage booster. So my fuel system is twin 450s in the tank, which in a third gen is tight already. So we really can't do triples very easily. It's extremely hard. And then we have a uh, True Motorsports voltage booster back there. And then we have a leash electronics board with dual 70 amp relays on it. And it looks like the 12 volt trigger side of the relay module is starting to get some money voltage going across. I'm getting about two, three volts. Well, that was back feeding into the booster and causing the booster to overheat. And then when we would get the hop switch to close, we were still having issues at that pin. So it wasn't turning a second fuel pump on. So we were getting kind of like, instead of 18.5 volts of boost, we we're getting 16 and a half volts of boost to one pump and the secondary pump wasn't ever coming on. So since we have a wide band when the 5.3 blew up, and I didn't get a data log when the 5.3 blew up because I had the SD card out because I was looking at it from the last run. It's a very high possibility that we leaned out when the pressure fell because what just happened on this run. And it went boom, because it had no way to come compensate with the wide band. So now we've got that fixed up, it looks like. Um, the fuel pumps are gonna be a lot louder because we got both of them coming out at the same time. So my little regulator is holding pressure well actually let's tighten up the let's tighten up the regulator adjustment okay So that fix, let's see, did it fix our fuel pressure problem? Yeah, fix our fuel pressure problem. Need a little more fuel added in for the tune. All right, so fuel is looking pretty good now. Uh, we are making 800 horsepower. 809 now. Now that I kind of got the little boost taper on the top end plug fixed. Peak power is 6,200 RPMs. Really haven't gotten after the timing a whole bunch yet. So I'm going to 
start upping the boost. And then once I kind of hit the limit of what this turbo can do, then I'm going to uh, start adding timing in. Yeah. pressure but it really didn't pick up any boost made 850 hmm huh weird but check everything out real fast okay so we put more of a dome on it we made put up like five more pounds of dome on it and it barely picked up a pound so we might be running out of turbo so we may be starting to see a lot of back pressure. I'm gonna throw five more pounds of dome on it. And I'm watching our intake air temps, make sure they don't climb too high. I do not have my dome pressure sensor installed on this one right now. So it's very likely we're gonna run out of turbo. So let's see what it picks up on this. And then we may just be adding timing to make up the power difference. Alright, so we got 16 pounds of boost on that one. So we got 895 horsepower. Not great, but I mean, it is a little turbo. We're gonna have five more pounds of dump. And then we're going after the timing. Oil pressure is looking good. We got about 80, 85 pounds of oil pressure. Yeah, let's do one more. Got 935 on that one. Made about 18 pounds. I think we're finally getting exhaust hot enough to burn out the old motor. So I'm seeing, I'm seeing that. All right, so I'm gonna let it cool down a little bit and I'm gonna add some timing to it.
All right, so we got 18.8 pounds, made 9.95. ITs were pretty hot when we started. I primed it twice. We got from like 168 degrees down to like 144. During the run, it was 107. But I think because of the hot air, like we're still not getting a lot of, uh, we still got some warm air. So, either way, some good power. I dig it. So, small turbo, we see bigger turbos. So, I mean, it peaked horsepower the whole time around 625. So, I'll pop you out of here. All right, we can go ahead and strap. I think we'll be good to load up now. Yeah. Yep, that all looks good. Got plenty of oil pressure. Yeah, everything's looking pretty good, so. That'll work. Let's go look at this dynograph. I think I got all my belts in here. I'm gonna grab my helmet, my race gear out of the race car. Whee! All right. So where we came in at, with everything nice and cool, with 16 and a half pounds, and then fell to like 15 and a half pounds. But everything is a lot warmer. 18 and a half pounds. Which it may still want a little more timing right there. I'm not going to push it real, real hard. So, I mean, it'll probably be my max amount of boost I'll run. And then uh, I need to do some plug reads. But I just kind of want to shake this thing down and see how it's going to do with the bigger motor. and. I think Megan's best ET is a 610 at 122 on a foot brake. I removed a Megan's worth of interior out of the car for this uh, testing. But like I said, we are going to put the interior back in because we do. I did build this car for daily driver and tree street stuff. So, and uh, the car is extremely quiet with this exhaust system on it. So I'm not too worried about the sound dead in there. And then as far as insulation properties go, I've got a good working heater and a good working AC. So I'll either heat myself up or cool myself down, whatever I need. All right, I think that's it. We're gonna try to get this thing loaded in the trailer and hit up to our local racetrack, US 36, and do a little testing. <laughs> 